the snap tight assembly system locks end channels to wall sheets without the need for tools or fasteners. To assemble each panel, the perimeter channels are secured to the top and bottom of each sheet. Gently tap the channel over the snap tight lugs and work your way along the sheet. Each channel should be fit to the center of each sheet. Simply tap the channel along until it's aligned. We're going to join our splice channels now. Basically, we're just joining a pair of channels together to make a longer one. There are three parts, a left channel, a right channel, and the joiner. Looking at the part numbers, you'll see that the left channel has the letter L and the right channel has the letter R at the end of the part number. There are also printed arrows pointing to the end of the channel that needs to be joined. The joiner, called a CSJ, needs to be put in the right way to match the channel. Make sure that you've got the long sides matched up. Place the CSJ centered on the end and press in as shown until you hear it click. Repeat this with the other side and then make sure that both halves are butted up against one another. Do this for the rest of the splice channels in the pack before beginning construction. Let's assemble our ridge beam. We'll need the left piece of the beam, 97ALR, the right piece, which in this case is another 97ALR, the joiner, which is a ZASP, and some wafer head tech screws. Flip the ridge beam pieces over and make sure you have the ends orientated as pictured. Slide the capping of one under the other and push together until the hat sections are flush. Place the zasps into the underside of the ridge beam. Make sure it's in the center of the ridge beam. Once the joiner is in, turn the beam back over. Get a tape and measure out 250mm from the center, marking every 50mm on the center of the ridge beam. Do this for both sides. Now we have our holes marked, use a 3mm drill bit to drill out the end mark and secure the ridge beam and joiner with a tech screw. Now that the joiner is held in, drill out the remaining holes and secure with six more of the wafer head tech screws. Let's get started with the rear panel. To construct the rear panel, we're going to need 155B channel, 181B channel, two 30A sheets, and two of the 31A sheets. Lay out your sheets so that the two 31A sheets are on the inside and the two 30A sheets are on the outside. Overlap the sheets so that they sit flush top and bottom and the pre-punched holes along the edges are aligned. Once aligned, use 9 of the 10mm self-tapping screws to fasten all the sheets together.
Now that your screws are in, take the 55B channel and attach it to the top of the sheets using the snap type method. The channel will need to have the short side facing towards the outside of the panel. Use two of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the channel and the CSJ. Repeat the process for the channel 81B, attaching it to the bottom of our sheets. Use two of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the channel and the CSJ. This completes the rear wall assembly. Let's do the roof panel assembly. To construct the roof panel, we'll need one 60A channel, one 81A channel, two of the 85A lips, and four of the 52A sheets. Lay out the sheets, orientating them so there's a row of pre-punched holes all at the bottom of the sheets. Overlap the sheets by one rib, then secure using six of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the 60A channel and attach it to the top of the sheets using the snap type method. The short side of the channel will need to face the outside. Take the 81A channel and attach it to the bottom of the sheets. Use two of the 10mm self-tapping screws in the underside of the channel and CSJ to fasten them together. Take an 85A lip and place it on the side of the sheet. The lip will slide between the channels in the sheet. Fasten the lip using three of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the other 85A lip and place it on the other side of the sheet, sliding it between the channels and sheet. Fasten the lip using three of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Once complete, repeat these steps to construct the other roof panel. Only proceed to the next step with one. Flip the roof panel over and get easy access to the 60A channel. Take the ridge beam and slide it onto the 60A channel. The top of the ridge beam will face the outside. Line up the pre-punched holes, then secure the ridge beam with four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. That completes the roof panel assembly. Time for the side panel assembly. To construct the side panel, we'll need one peak brace, one 82L channel, one 82R channel, one 81E channel, one 36L sheet, and one 36R sheet. 
Lay out the sheets so that the 36L sheet is on the left and the 36R sheet is on the right. Overlap the sheets by one rib, then secure with two of the 10mm self-tapping screws in the bottom two holes. Leave the top one free for now. Use tin snips to trim the intersecting corner of the sheets. This will allow the channels to go on nicely. Finish securing the sheets with one 10mm self-tapping screw. Take the 82L channel and attach it to the top left of the sheets using the snap type method. The short side of the channel will face towards the outside. Take the 82R channel and attach it to the top right of the sheets, ensuring that the two channels meet in the middle. Place the peak brace over the pre-punched holes in the top of the channels. Secure the peak brace with six of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Attach the 81E channel to the bottom of the sheets, ensuring the short side of the channel faces the outside. Repeat all these steps for the other side panel. They're both exactly the same. Time to start the front panel assembly. To construct the front panel we'll need 155A channel, 155C channel, 179A channel, two of the 89A jams, one 90A jam, and two of the 34A sheets. Position the two sheets with the gap in the middle which will form the doorway. Make sure that the edge of the sheets with the narrower pan is towards the inside. Take an 89A jam and place it over the inside edge of one of the sheets. Make sure that the holes align. Repeat this for the other 89A jam. Secure the two jams using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Attach the 55A channel to the top of the sheets using the snap type method. The short side of the channel will need to face towards the outside of the sheets. Ensure the hole in the end of the jam aligns with the outer hole in the channel. Repeat the process for the other sheet, ensuring that the hole in the end of the jam aligns with the outer hole in the channel. Take the 90A jam and place it into the channel. The notches in the end of the jam will need to slide over the jams of the door frame. Once the jam is placed correctly, secure the channel at the end using three of the 10mm self-tapping screws.
Repeat this process for the other end of the 90A jam, securing the channel with three of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Now use six of the 10mm self-tapping screws to further secure the jam to the channel, and then that channel to the CSJ. Use two of the 10mm self-tapping screws in the underside of the channel and the CSJ. Take the 55C channel and repeat this process, attaching it to the bottom of the sheets using the snap type method. Next, we'll take the 79A channel and place it so its long side is inside the bottom channel, as shown. Use three of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure this channel. Move to the other side and use three more of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the channel. Now use five more of the 10mm self-tapping screws along the channel. Finally, put two more of the 10mm self-tapping screws in the underside of the channel and the CSJ. This completes our front panel assembly. Let's construct the left door panel. To make the left door panel, we'll need one 12A door plate, two pad bolts, two 58C channels, one 58A channel, two 91A jams, one 89C jam, and the door A sheet. To start, note the orientation of the sheet. The pre-punched holes for the door plate are on the right. Take the 89C jam and place it over the edge of the sheet which has the holes for the door plate. Use two of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure this jam to the sheet. Take the 58A channel and place it on the other side of the sheet. Make sure that the hinges can extend upwards towards the outside of the door. Use three of the 10mm self-tapping screws to fasten the channel to the sheet. Take the 58C channel and snap tight it onto the top of the sheet. This channel will go over the front of the existing channel and over the jam. Secure this jam with a 10mm self-tapping screw in each corner. Repeat this process for the other 58C channel, attaching it to the bottom of the sheet. Fasten with a 10mm self-tapping screw in each of the corners. Next, we'll attach the 12A door plate by placing it over the pre-punched holes midway up the door on the side of the sheet. Fix this door plate using six of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Now, flip the sheet over. Take one of the 91A jams and place it over the diagonal row of pre-punched holes, sliding one face into the corner of the panel. Fasten one 10mm self-tapping screw through the sheet and into the jam. Use another 10mm self-tapping screw to fasten the other end of the jam to the sheet. Now do the same for the other 91A jam, sliding it into the corner and lining it with the pre-punched holes. Secure the jam and the corner channels using two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Use another 10mm self-tapping screw in the other end of the jam. We'll attach the pad bolts. For this, we'll need to use the supplied 4mm nuts and bolts. Place the pad bolt over the four pre-punched holes in the top of the sheet. From the underside of the sheet, push through the bolts 
and then finger tighten the nylock nuts. Now use pliers or a shifter to hold the nut and then use the drill to tighten up the bolts. Repeat this process for the other pad bolt at the bottom of the sheet, placing it over the holes and then using the four nuts and bolts. Flip the door back over and finish securing the jams using six of the 10mm self-tapping screws along the diagonal holes. This completes our left door panel. Let's construct the right door panel. To make the right door panel we'll need one 12A door plate, one pad bolt, one 58A channel, one 58B channel, two 58C channels, two 91A jams, and the door B sheet. To start, note the orientation of the sheet. We have our holes for the door plate on the left. Take the 58B channel and place it over the edge of the sheet which has the holes for the door plate. Use two of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure this channel to the sheet. Take the 58A channel and place it on the other side of the sheet, making sure that the hinges can extend upwards towards the outside of the door. Use three of the 10mm self-tapping screws to fasten this channel to the panel. Take the 58C channel and use the snap type method to attach it to the top of the sheet. This channel will go over the top of the sheet and over the front edges of the 58A and 58B channels. Use a 10mm self-tapping screw in each of the corners. Repeat this process for the other 58C channel, but on the bottom of the sheet. Again, using a 10mm self-tapping screw in each of the corners. Next, we'll attach the door plate and pad bolt. Position the door plate on the pre-punched holes midway up the sheet. Fasten it using a 10mm self-tapping screw. Next, take the pad bolt and position as shown. Fix using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws and finish off with a final 10mm self-tapping screw. Flip the door panel over. Take one of the 91A jams and place it over the diagonal row of pre-punched holes, sliding one face into the corner of the panel. Fasten one 10mm self-tapping screw through the sheet and into the jam. Use two 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the top corner channels. Use another 10mm self-tapping screw to fasten the other end of the jam to the sheet. Now do the same for the other 91A jam, sliding it into the corner and lining it with the pre-punched holes. Secure the end of the jam and two bottom corner channels using three 10mm self-tapping screws. Use another 10mm self-tapping screw in the other end of the jam. Flip the door back over and finish securing the braces with six of the 10mm self-tapping screws. This completes our right door panel assembly. Let's attach the doors. Lay out the front panel so you have access to the door hinge holes. Place the right door panel over the front panel so the hinges align with these holes.
Use the 3mm drill bit to clear out the hinge holes at the top. Fasten the door using three of the pop rivets. Repeat this process for the bottom hinge, clearing out the holes and fastening with three more pop rivets. Place the left door panel over the front panel so the hinge is aligned with the holes. Use the 3mm drill bit to clear out the hinge holes at the top. Fasten the door using three of the pop rivets. Repeat this process for the bottom hinge, clearing out the holes and fastening with three more pop rivets. Our doors are now attached. Stand up the rear panel or get a friend to hold it for you. We'll start by attaching the left panel. Slide the top and bottom channels of the side panel into the notches of the rear panel channels. Once the pre-punched holes are aligned, fasten using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat the process for the right side panel now, making sure that the holes align in the sheeting. Once aligned, fasten the sheets together using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Now we'll attach the front panel. We recommend you get a friend to help you hold it. Align the front panel with the left panel, slotting the channels together and making sure that the holes line up. Once aligned, fasten the two panels together using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat the process for the right side, aligning the panels, then fastening with four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Take the roof panel with the ridge beam attached to it and lift it onto the shed. Get a friend to help you place it onto the shed and make sure that the lips are on the outside of the side walls. Align the ridge beam with the holes in the peak brace. Fasten the ridge beam to the peak brace by using a 10mm self-tapping screw at either end. Place the remaining roof panel onto the top of the shed, sliding it so that the lips are on the outside. Pull the edge of the roof panel and slide it along and into the ridge beam. You may need to wiggle the roof panel to get it all the way in.
Make sure the holes in the ridge beam align with the holes in the roof panel. Fasten the ridge beam to the roof panel using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Drill out the hole in the peak brace and ridge beam, then fasten with one 10mm self-tapping screw. Repeat for the other end of the ridge beam, drill out and secure with one 10mm self-tapping screw. Secure the sheets together using six of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Use eight of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the roof panel to the front panel. Repeat for the back of the roof, securing the rear wall with eight of the 10mm self-tapping screws. On the right side, use four of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the lips to the side wall. Repeat for the left side, using four more of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the lips. Fold the gable cap as shown. Slide the bottom hooks under the lips, then place the cap over the lips and ridge beam. Drill out both holes on the top, then secure with two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat these steps for the gable cap on the other side of the ridge beam. The last steps are to attach the pad bolt hasps. Place the pad bolt hasp over the pad bolt shaft, drill out one hole with a 3mm drill bit, then fasten with one 10mm self-tapping screw. Finish off by drilling out and then securing with one more of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat the same process we did for the interior pad bolt. Drill out the holes and secure with two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Firstly position the shed onto the slab, making sure the walls are squared up and it's centered. Take your angle brackets and lay them out in the positions as shown, spacing them equally along each wall. Using these brackets as a template, go around and carefully mark where the holes are on the slab and on the wall.
drill 3mm pilot holes in the wall centered on these marks. Now switch out to the 10mm drill bit and drill through these pilot holes. Next, take your hammer drill and insert the 10mm masonry drill bit. Drill down through the marks we made earlier. Be sure to go down deep enough for the height of the diner bolt. From the outside of the shed, take the 10mm bolt and poke it inside. You may need a friend to hold it there. Align the angle bracket with the bolt and then tighten the nut by hand. Tighten it further using the shifting spanner. Put the diner bolt through the bracket and into the hole in the slab. Tighten this nut on the diner bolt with a shifting spanner. Now that this has been done at all positions, the structure is anchored. Now the shed is complete, any leftover holes can be finished off with a screw.